David sees himself as a great macroeconomist whose primary job is to educate people about honest money and the benefits of a sound financial system, and whose second job is to teach people to be patient and believe in investment assets. A dynamic, in-demand speaker around the world, David's educational mission makes him a prolific author who has penned, Get the Skinny on Silver Investing, as an ebook or via Amazon.com. He has appeared on CNBC, Fox Business and BNN in Canada as the broadcaster of The Morgan Report. He has been interviewed by The Wall Street Journal, Futures Magazine, The Gold Report, and many other publications. Additionally, he provides the public with a tremendous amount of information via radio and is often written in the public domain. I think of a recent article I read on the Morgan Report by uh, one of your contributors uh, and, you know, entitled Close Your Eyes, Go to Sleep, Everything is Fine, This is What They Want Us to Believe. And in it, the, out, the article outlines seven disturbing trends. Now, I'm not going to go through each trend. I invite the folks to, to read the article on their own. But one I want to hone in on is that U.S. monetary policymakers are denying or redefining simple terms like recession and inflation. I want to talk more about this. What is meant here? Well, it's pure Orwellian doublespeak. I mean, anyone that's ever read or watched or studied 1984 knows that, you know, war is peace and freedom is slavery. These are words that in the book talk about how words were convoluted and basically meant the opposite of what they had originally meant. And so John was just pointing it out to the reader that we can redefine whatever we want. And this is total dictatorial, totalitarian rhetoric that we know you don't, you believe us. And if you don't believe us, your social credit score is going to go down if you speak out against it. And of course, this is the, you know, this is as anti-freedom as you can get. And of course, the whole point of not only the monetary system or sound money from my study perspective, but the whole human experience is about being free. And if you are not free, then are you really yourself or do you have the ability to really express yourself to in total? And the answer is no. And that's basically idealistic. I mean, you can be quote unquote free and still belong to a group or look for a mentor. Or, you know, you, 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 very few people, you know, blaze their own trail. There's very few pioneers. There's a lot of frontiersmen that will go behind the people that blaze the trail, but there mm -hmm. aren't many true leaders. I'm off track, Daniela, but my point is that we've got to understand we are in the matrix. We are in the Orwellian society. Everything that you see, you should actually immediately think the opposite of if it comes from the mainstream press. If they say it's a Patriot Act, think it's an unpatriot act. If they say it's inflation reduction, think it's inflation acceleration. This is how you have to start. And there are many of us that do that. And there are many that do not even understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's like a whole other topic because I would love to get into like, how do you, you know, we could maybe touch on it here. It's like, how do you protect yourself in this matrix, matrix like environment? I know you've spoken about gold and silver, but one thing I want to bring up are your thoughts on, on crypto. Uh, because I know in one of your other articles, you ask, why are you still putting your faith in cryptos? Um, you were speaking, obviously, to the, the trillion dollars that was wiped out of the market with, you know, we saw the, the crash of Luna and Celsius and whatnot. Um, you know, why, why, why can't you embrace um, a notion like Bitcoin? Because I would think, you know, you as a pioneer of freedom, of, you know, getting outside of the system, would, would embrace such a thought concept. Yeah, that's a great question, and thanks for bringing it up. First of all, I'm not anti-crypto, and I'm for the blockchain. And Bitcoin specifically, if you go to my Crypto Conspiracy series on my blog and look at um, interview number 14, you'll see how much I agree with the basics, Satoshi Nakamoto's premise on what Bitcoin was started as. And it's been morphed into basically a payment or a currency or a coin. Whereas really it was a transaction process. It was a software to basically eliminate the middleman and have total transparency and be fair to both sides without any banker or broker in between. But it's been morphed again into something different than that. So one, I don't like that idea. I like the basic start and um, you know, I have no control over how it's been morphed or tweaked. 
But if you go back to my first article I wrote in the public domain, it still exists, my two bits about Bitcoin. I say that in that in that article, we will see if it really gains traction, you'll see the authorities come in and start to regulate it. And that's what we've seen all throughout across the board. So I think the concept of uh, independent money is great. I'm more for specie money or commodity backed money. But in theory and in practice, you can have your own uh, agreement because money is several things. And I don't want to get into the theory of money. I have books back there, talk whole books about the theory of money. But either it's really something of substance like gold or silver, or it's a contract. And the contract is, you know, the Ithaca dollars, I brought that up in other interviews, is just really a piece of paper issued by the local community. And they all agree. And the agreement is that an hour's labor is worth this piece of paper. And you can trade that piece of paper for a unit of labor for someone else. And so you can have just a contractual agreement and use it as money, a medium of exchange, even a store of value if you don't you know, inflate it. So there's lots of answers to your question, but I, I think that outlined it fairly well. While we're on the topic of optics, uh, something else I want to bring up are your thoughts on the U.S. dollar. You say, quote, while the news says the dollar is going up, we know the real story. The purchasing value of that dollar has been in a steep decline. Rent, food, gas, cars, real estate have all gone through the roof. You say we've been deceived into thinking our fiat system is fine. What do you mean by that? Well, again, optics. So it's, I'll try to give an analogy. This is off the top of my head, but you know, if you're racing a Volkswagen and you have a Ford Mustang, you can just, you know, blow the doors off of it, you know, on a street race. But, and so then you measure everything on that one race, you know, so look at that. So the dollar is strong against all the other contenders. But if you look at the reality of something like stood the test of time like gold, which might be something like uh, a a Lamborghini, and it gets in a race, it's just going to blow the doors off that Mustang. But that's something that no one really sees, talks about, or or is very knowledgeable about. They all know the Lamborghini's there, but they don't see it in action. And that's sort of my analogy, is that you see real money will usurp fake money. But as I've said again many times, we trust what we trust. And most people have taught to believe or have faith in paper money. And they will more and more. As the stock market goes down, the bond market crashes, the corporate zombie banks or zombie corporations uh, blow away, the, the faith will be in that piece of paper. And more or less rightfully so. But as that starts to drift away because of 9% inflation and food scarcity and rent increases and oil prices, that is when you get that psychological shift that moves into something of real substance. And that's in the past always been the precious metal.